In this video, I'll introduce you to a method we developed in my lab to display multi-gene, multi-chromosome crosses in fruit flies. We call this method column mapping. A column map is going to help you see all of the possible genotypes of offspring for a cross. So let's start by looking at our parent generation. In this example cross, we will have a female that is heterozygous W plus W minus, heterozygous lobe over wild type, and homozygous ebony mutant. This female mates with a male who is W minus, curly over plus, and humeral over plus. As a starting point, let's remind ourselves what the chromosomes look like for these parents by drawing them below the genotypes. Let's just focus on the sex chromosomes for now. We see that the only gene of interest in this cross on the X chromosome is white. The female has two Xs, one with the wild type W plus allele and one with the mutant W minus allele. The male has a single X chromosome carrying the W minus allele paired with a Y chromosome. Remember that chromosomes travel as a unit in meiosis and a parent will only donate one of each type of chromosome to its offspring. So this female will either give her eggs this chromosome carrying the W plus allele or this chromosome carrying the W minus allele. Similarly, in meiosis, this male can give his sperm either his X carrying the W minus allele or his Y chromosome. In fertilization, one egg from this female will fuse with one sperm from this male to form a diploid genotype. So we know that this female can pair this X with either the X or the Y from the male, or she can pair this X with the X or the Y from the male, leading to four possible genotype combinations associated with the sex chromosomes. That's not so bad. But now remember that we are simultaneously considering two other chromosome pairs with chromosome two and chromosome three, and things can get messy and confusing. That's where column mapping comes in. So we'll start by drawing the remaining chromosomes of our parent genotypes. One thing to note is that you want to include all the genes of interest on the chromosomes. So for example, the female genotype does not mention the curly gene, but the male does. This means that the female here is homozygous wild type at the curly gene. When we draw the female chromosomes, we want to have a placeholder for that gene on our chromosome. So we will draw this chromosome as L with a plus placeholder for the curly wild type allele we know is there. And then the homolog will have a wild type allele for lobe and a wild type allele for curly. We'll do the same thing over here with the male second chromosome. We know the male is homozygous wild type at the lobe gene, and we will include pluses as placeholders there. And we add in the curly mutant on this chromosome and the curly wild type on this chromosome. Same idea for the third chromosome. We have two identical ebony mutant alleles on the female chromosomes, and we want wild type placeholders where we will account for the humeral gene. And for the male fly, we see that he is heterozygous at humeral, and we know he is homozygous wild type for ebony. Now for the column mapping. We'll start by drawing columns for each chromosome that is involved in our cross. For us, that is the sex chromosomes and chromosome two and three. We realize that we could also be considering a fourth column for chromosome four, but since our parent genotypes in this example don't include chromosome four, we will leave chromosome four out of our column map. In each column, we're going to list the possible offspring chromosome combinations. As we discussed earlier in the video, we can pair the female W plus X chromosome with the male W minus X chromosome or the male Y chromosome. And we can pair this female W minus X chromosome with the male W minus X chromosome or his Y chromosome. This column shows all of the possible sex chromosome combinations for the offspring of this cross. We also know, based on the law of segregation, that each of these options has an equal chance of occurring, so they all show up one quarter of the time in the offspring. Moving on to the second chromosome, we'll follow the same method. We can pair the female wild type second chromosome with the male wild type second chromosome or the male curly second chromosome and we compare the female lobe chromosome with the male wild type or the male curly chromosomes. Here we see all four possible second chromosome pairings you might see in the offspring of this cross. Once again, 
Each of these options has an equal chance of occurring, so they all show up one quarter of the time in the offspring. And for the third chromosome, we'll do the same thing once again. We see in our drawing that the female's two-third chromosomes are identical, so we know that she really only has one option to donate to her eggs, a chromosome carrying the mutant ebony allele. So she can pair this mutant ebony allele with either the male wild-type chromosome or the male mutant humeral chromosome. Because the female's homozygous, we see that there are only two possible offspring third chromosome genotypes in this cross. And just like we saw in the other columns, these options show up in equal proportions, so they each show up one half of the time in the offspring. Okay, so now we've mapped the cross in the columns. What does this mean? Well, what we should realize is that the offspring can have any combination of these chromosome pairings. Any combination of one choice from this column, one choice from this column, and one choice from this column. This sex chromosome combination ends up in offspring with any of these four second chromosome options and either of these two third chromosome options. To write out all of these would be tedious. In these columns, you can see all possible combinations at once. Now what kind of things can we learn from this map? If you want to determine the overall number of distinct potential offspring genotypes for this cross, all you need to do is count the number of distinct genotypes in each column and then multiply those together. In this case, we have four distinct genotypes here, four here, and two here. Four times four times two is 32. So we have 32 distinct offspring genotype options coming out of this cross. If I want to know the chance of a specific genotype occurring, I can also find that out by looking at the column map. Let's say I want to know the chance of seeing offspring with this genotype. I look in the map and I multiply the probabilities of each chromosome pair together. So, in this case, we see that W plus over Y occurs in one quarter of the offspring, lobe over curly occurs in one quarter of the offspring, and ebony over plus occurs in one half of the offspring. So, 1 quarter times 1 quarter times 1 half is 1 in 32. 1 in 32 offspring will have this genotype. You can also focus in on one or two phenotypes. For example, what if I wanted to know what percentage of my offspring will have curly wings? I can see that curly wings will result from this genotype or this genotype in the offspring. Because they're in the same column, I'll add these two numbers together and see that half of my offspring will have curly wings. What if I wanted to know what percent of my offspring will have red eyes and curly wings? I'll see that half of my offspring will have red eyes and half will have curly wings. So I'll multiply these numbers from each column together, one half by one half, and see that one quarter of the offspring will have red eyes and curly wings. So as you can see, column mapping just gives you an alternative way to look at all possible offspring genotype options when considering a cross with parents with complex multi-chromosome genotypes. If you want to learn more, check out my video on column mapping when considering linked genes and recombination.